So today we're going to be doing some uh, acid etching uh, demonstrations. So let's come on over here and see what Glenn's up to here. Hi Glenn. Hey, how you doing? Good. I just got my gloves on. By the way, this is Glenn Woods and Keith Herbrand, the Pottery Boys. Yeah. We were finally back in our studio here in Palm Harbor, Florida. And we uh, just finished a few pieces when we were in Chicago or Blue Island. And uh, we knew we wanted to acid etch them. But we thought we would save them for when we get home. Uh, so I just thought we would show you a little bit about what happens when you acid etch some crystalline pots. Now, the pieces I'm going to take out of this little vat here, these have been soaking for a little more than an hour. So I'm going to take these out. It doesn't look too much different, but these were really, really dark cobalt. You could barely see any of the crystals unless you put it directly in the sun. And what do you use for the liquid? Yeah, this is a... Um, a material that's used in the pool industry that's called um, DH uh, pH balance I think is mm. what it's called and it's a sodium bisulfate mm. and yes. it's a, a white powder that we put in um, water and um, so it makes this really acidic and uh, you can see with the gloves it's important to have some protection and um, I sometimes do not acid etch the lid, but in this case, I acid etched both lids, and I hope I won't regret this. Uh, the main reason for me not acid etching the lid is sometimes the acid can make the uh, glaze a little more three-dimensional or have a little bit of a um, texture to it. Um, that's not real pleasant. So on the lid, I, I want probably the strongest color and the smoothest uh, surface possible. So I'm going to uh, rinse these off later, but I'll rinse these off right now. So you can see there's a little bit of um, excitement. Kind of, yeah. yeah, so what happens is the, the acid etching creates more contrast between the crystal and the background. So I'm going to take these over here, and I like to rinse them off with a hot water. Um, mainly because I feel like it does a better job rinsing the acid off, but also I feel like it kind of activates the acid a little bit more, and that's just an uneducated thought. I don't really know that that's happening, but... It also uh, has some kind of film on it that you don't wash it real good usually, right. so... We'll so, sometimes use some soap also, just a little bit of... There are a lot of really interesting um, things that people are doing with crystalline glazes these days that I just, either I didn't hear about them or I, I don't think they were being done. And this acid etching is relatively new and it was introduced to us from, or by Adam, not Adam, um, Ian, Ian Childers, yeah. Um, so it was, for them it was called the Childers effect, but uh, once he started talking about it, he had learned that uh, acid etching has been around for many, many, many years um, for different reasons. Um, but this, when we dry this off, you can't really see the effect until you... Although this one here dry. is beginning to... Yeah, so if we dry this off, and as that surface starts to dry, you can see the crystal oh, yeah, yeah. really starts to change and come to life. and. Just see the, the difference between the contrast here between the ground and the crystal. That'll um, punch up again once you wet that or dry that surface. But um, our friend uh, Phil Hamling from, the, from New York, he does acid etching, but he likes to soak his pots in water uh, overnight or a little bit longer to make sure all the acid is oh. gone. Oh, the piece. What can happen is if there's a little bit of crazing that shows up in the crystal, uh, you don't see any real crazing here. Although, yeah, I can see it now. Uh, sometimes the um, that powdery substance that makes this acidic will sh will soak into this crystal, and it'll s start leaching out again, and it creates this real powdery, um, really not a real pretty effect. It, um, so it's really important to get all that acid out of there, and that's why he soaks it overnight in water. So that's that's that one. And you can see this one just by itself is really, beginning to, yeah, because yeah. of the drying. What's kind of nice about this, when I'm 
selling these out in the field is, or at the art fairs, is I'll explain that, you know, once you wet this, it changes the color of the crystal, and then once it dries, it returns to its its uh, natural beauty. So if we just do this, put a tiny little bit of water on there, you can see that it Darkens goes it. goes back to that dark crystal again. So what we're going to do is, um, because you don't have the benefit of seeing this before it was acid etched, um, some pieces definitely you don't want to acid etch. The materials that work best with acid would be um, manganese, which a lot of people don't don't do. Manganese um, and uh, nickel, definitely nickel, and cobalt and copper. Cobalt and copper are the, really the two main ones that respond best to the acid etching, and uh, that's why the nickel um, responds well, is because nickel has cobalt contaminants in it. So we have two others that we uh, have not uh, acid etched yet. We want to show you what it looks like before, yeah, so and then in an hour and a half or an hour, we'll come back and finish this video just to show the difference. So, yeah, so I'm going to just put these put two those in. in the and you, you want to make sure you wear gloves. And um, if it's really strong acid, we used to use... Um, muriatic. Muriatic acid. Yeah. And that and was so strong, you could actually see fumes kind of coming up from the and So you got to be careful acid. breathing and your skin, my goodness. Um, so the muriatic acid was really very strong, and it, it acid etched too quickly. It's possible to acid etch too long. So you, you don't want to overdo it because you can't undo it. So, so I'm you're, gonna put, you're gonna do those I'm also. I'm gonna put them. these in. I I wasn't going to, but these look pretty nice up here. Okay. So we'll come back in another hour or so and show you the difference. And I just wanted to point out something on uh, Glenn's shirt before we end here. It's a cool little logo that he just put together. Tour de Clay Virtual Reality 2020. So our uh, uh, tour de Clay um, studio tour this December, the second weekend in December, is uh, both virtual and in person this year for the first time. So um, we're going to be talking more about that as time goes. So yeah, so we have normally have um, live demonstrations and kiln openings during that time, um, during our opening. But this time, because of uh, COVID social distancing, we want to make sure that all of our demonstrations are really video presentations and that's why we're doing these uh, for the tour. So uh, come back, well we'll come back shortly and we'll show you that next set of plots and how they look before and after. Sounds good. All right. See you. See ya. Hello again, this is Keith Herbrand and Glenn Woods, uh, the Pottery Boys. We're back with our acid etching demo. Yeah, so uh, right before we broke, we just took these out of the acid, and you can see um, the acid really did a nice job. You can see the outside halo is nice and light. You can see all the little um, feathery kind of qualities to that outside crystal, which we really love. So um, right before we um, took these out, or right before we broke, we put another pair in the acid, so you got to see them before they were acid etched. Whereas these, we got to see them after they were acid etched and not before. So let's see. Now you can see, in my, from my memory, these look almost identical when they're wet from they did right before they were yeah. acid etched. So we're just now gonna... there's lids in there also, right? Yeah, the lids in there. Would you like me to take this one? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll oh. set this over here. Yeah, so poor Keith. Trying to do both here. Sorry. <laughs> is handling the uh, piece that has acid on it, so his fingers are probably tingling right now. Not it's important bad. to wear gloves. Yes, it is, yeah. All right, so I like to rinse these with hot water. So that's what they look like before. This has cobalt, copper, titanium and probably a little bit of uh, ilmenite maybe? I'm not sure. I have to look at the rest. I think it has some rutiol and ilmenite on the top. Okay, yeah. 
So that's where the yellow is coming from. All right, so I'm going to turn this off here. Now we can see when it's wet, it doesn't look that great or different, I should say. I think it always looks yeah, great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. These will be available at the tour, Declay, the virtual tour. You can see once that dries, those crystals just really pop. And uh, uh, they'll probably be available in person also if you can make it. But. Yeah, yeah, we'll have them here. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be, um, we're thinking these are going to be about $235. Um, yeah, and they'll be available on PotteryBoys.com. Yeah. But so that's, wow, that turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful crystals. Let's see what this one did here. So you don't notice the etching quite as much on the top where the uh, rutile and the ilmenite is, but you really do notice it down where the copper and the cobalt is. And Glenn had mentioned that earlier that those Some chemicals colors, just don't work. But the combination, I think, is beautiful. Yeah, I guess what I meant to say is there are some chemicals that don't react to the acid etch. etch. Yeah. So uh, cobalt and copper are the two main ones that react. Now watch this. This is like magic here. Dry it off a little bit. Yeah, it just comes to life. Wow. And again, not that it wasn't beautiful before, so we don't acid etch everything. No, we don't. In fact, there we have a whole table full of pieces that we just finished and they all could be acid etched but we're choosing to acid etch only about half of yeah, them. Yeah, in fact we have some over in the back table, yeah, we can mm -hmm. show that too. Wow, that just really, whew, look at that. It is very bright and cheery and beautiful. Okay, so uh, did you want to show them the table full of things? Yeah, why don't you come on over and can point some of these things out. So these are also ones that were done in uh, Blue Island before we came down. All right. So this is a series I'm working on that's uh, kind of influenced by a series I called the COVID Tears, where I'm streaking uh, contrasting colors of crystalline glazes. And what I think is really awesome is that even though there are streaks of color creating this really beautiful pattern in the background, it doesn't interrupt the crystalline growth. They are almost totally unaware of the fact that there are other colors or other color oxides, cobalt and, and uh, copper, running through the crystalline field. It's just amazing. So if I can say that about my own work. So this is very similar to the one that just we just took out in terms of the combination. And this is a little more coppery, but I, I just love. Now when we acid etch this, this will all lighten up and I believe it'll soften this effect and what I like about these patterns is they remind me of the sun rays that come through the storm clouds at the end of a storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, um, check us out at potteryboys.com and plan on checking out the virtual the tour de clay virtual. Yeah, it's December twelfth and thirteenth, and we'll have demonstrations online. We'll have all kinds of uh, Facebook Live events and. Um, it's just, it's really going to be fun. So hopefully you'll put us on your calendar December 12th and 13th. And we'll have some other videos uh, before that to kind of talk about the event. So. Right. Actually, uh, this is really important. If you go to Tampa Tour de Clay, so that's, I don't think I have it on here, but no. tampatourdeclay.com, that has all the details there and it'll tell you times and, and everything. And also the participating, art, participating artists. We have Jennifer McCurdy, we have Lynn Mead, we have uh, Timothy Sullivan, uh, Teresa Testa, Teresa Testa, and um, Ellen just, Cole. Ellen Cole. Yeah. So many. That's just our Larry studio. Larry Allen. Yeah. Larry so Allen. Yeah. That's just our studio. Um, there are three physical studios this tour. Last year there were five, but because of COVID, we've narrow narrowed it down to three. And we'll have uh, social distancing. We're all wearing masks. We'll have hand sanitizers. All the work will be outside. It's no longer inside. So. Right. So yeah. we're making adjustments to make it safe for you and also the exhibitors. And uh, not everybody will be there, but everybody will be in the virtual tour. So um, check us out, powderboys.com, and check out tampatourdeclay.com for details on the tour.